I feel really good. Really, really good. All right. Okay. Well, as you well know, we are in Second, second uh, Timothy. And today we will be in the last lesson on, for, on Second Timothy. As a matter of fact, I was thinking from last Sunday, I thought, wow, looking at Second Timothy, what is there to preach in these last few verses? It's all greetings. You just say, you know, I miss Priscilla and Aquila and uh, oh, my, my ministry. I met some people, their problem. Well, it's kind of a closure. And I wasn't, I wasn't so sure what to talk about. Then, for some reason, something popped out. <laughs> and as you look at your outline this morning, we will be talking about people is... Say with me. You just look at your outline. People is... And ministry is... People. I mean, we could not separate the two. It's just impossible to separate ministry and or Christianity because all Christians were called into ministry and we could not separate them from people. So if we, you and I, are to say we are Christians, we are to deal with people. Now turn to a neighbor and say, I have to deal with you. <laughs> and say, oh no, I have to deal with you. And you all have to do with the pastor. That's true. Well, uh, as uh, Christians, as church leaders, uh, the truth of the matter is our joys and our pains all come from the same source. And they are from? People. From people. And so this morning, I would like you to turn your Bibles with me, please, to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I would really like to be focusing on ministry and people and relationships because I thought that Paul was wrapping up his letter to Timothy, just speaking about his relationship to different kinds of people in the church and outside of church. And that's why I'll be flashing so many names of people. Some of these names are unknown. It's hard to pronounce. And yet, each and every single name that has been mentioned in these last few verses of 2 Timothy are people with a story. They are people who have relationships. Uh, with Paul. He, there are people of whom Paul either had fun uh, ministering with or is really a pain in the neck as uh, they have to go through together. And I think it's exactly the same uh, with us today. There are some people in the church of which we are so glad. Hallelujah! I am with so and so and we are ministering and going to church together. And, and then you look at your left and say, uh oh <laughs> I have to go to church with this person. And uh, I think it's just a wonderful thing because the Lord has put, according to the Word of God, has put every single person just in the right place. And whether it be for joy, for fun, and for hardship, the Lord has a purpose why the person next to you and the person with this local church is with you and I this morning. So let's begin with the prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the person on my left. And the person on my right, behind me and in front of me. Some of them, Lord, I am so, so glad that you have put them uh, with me in this place to work together uh, for the ministry and the kingdom of God. At the same time, Father, I also thank you for those people whom I'm having hard dealing with. Uh, either they're giving me headaches, they're giving me uh, uh, goosebumps. But just the same, Lord, I thank you. Just as Paul is able to look at the different people that you permitted him to go through, to go with in his work and in his ministry for your glory. So help us, Lord, and teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The truth of the matter is, it is not possible to grow in the Lord without dealing with people. You and I cannot say, you know what, I want to be growing the Lord, I want to know the Lord more, but leave me alone. Is that possible? Yes. No. <laughs> oh no, my mama. <laughs> uh, why so? Because people is? People is? Ministry and ministry is? There you go. 
But as the matter is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, since ministry is people, and people are finite, people are uh, lacking in many ways, oftentimes relationship causes hurt. And this hurts, uh, sadly, is not just coming from the outside world, but most hurtful uh, things can happen from the very people whom we will share eternity with, well, for eternity, for the rest of our lives. And that is the people of God. And uh, as, uh, as we go to this, it is my desire and prayer that all of us, though we will have people around us who might be irritating, people who are not necessarily the kind of people we want to be with, since we are called to fellowship, and to fellowship means to have relationship with people, we cannot avoid, nor should we run away from building relationships and uh, opening our lives to other people because it is not possible, I repeat, not possible to say I want to grow with the Lord and not grow relationship with others. We will be chopping down these verses uh, from verses 9 to 22. I won't be reading the whole text, but we will be chopping it from point 1, point 2, and point 3. Okay? So, as you can see in, your, uh, in the bullet uh, on the board right here, we have different kinds of people, young, old, rich, poor, happy faces, lonely faces. The same is true with every single person and every single church in the world. Verse 9, this is the first portion I would like us to uh, just read. Do your best to come to me quickly. He's talking to Timothy. This is Paul. Last week he said, you know what? I am, my life is like a drink offering. I'm about to die. Uh, I don't know how many weeks, how many months, but I'm about to die. So, Timothy, come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Presence has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the par parchments. So several people that he mentioned here. First, he was speaking to Timothy. Timothy, come. Now, we already know a lot about Timothy. He is what Paul said, my son in the Lord. He is a person whom Paul had left in Ephesus to minister. And Paul right now is in Rome. Then he mentioned Demas, who is a problematic person. For a while, Demas was a very uh, faithful servant in the Lord. But for some reason, at this particular point in time in history, he left Paul alone and went back to the world. Then we see Crescens. Crescens is uh, a person we, we can presume here is still in ministry because it says here that uh, in verse uh, 10, Crescens has gone to Galatia. So we can presume that Crescens is one of the helpers and workers in the church, but Paul had to send him out to a particular ministry in Galatia. Then we have Titus, who is in Dalmatia. Now, I, I can think, isn't that the, the movie 101 Dalmatians? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Titus went there. He went to Dal uh, Dalmatia. And again, we'll presume here that Titus is also a man of God, a worker with Paul, but Titus is busy. He's somewhere else. He is in Dalmatia. Then we have Luke in verse 11. Dr. Luke, the author of the book of Luke and the book of Acts. And then we have Mark. Uh, Mark, we will, I will give a little more detail on Mark later on. But Mark is also the same person, He's the author of the book of Mark. Then we have Tychicus, who is sent to Ephesus. Scholars agree that Tychicus is the messenger who brought 2 Timothy from Rome to Ephesus, hoping to replace Timothy so that Timothy can go to Rome in the last days of Paul. So those are the first few characters in verses 9 to 12. And in our outline, we will be having three kinds of people that we will be dealing with as we go through ministry. And ministry is? And people is? 
So these are the kind of people that we are going to work with. And I think Paul is trying to give Timothy a glimpse on how to deal with certain group of people that you and I will be finding ourselves working with. And as we move forward, uh, you know, in the church, as we uh, pursue things of God, we will sometimes find good people around us, and there will be times not so good. So the first group of people that I would like to be talking about, that you and I will be dealing with, is, oh, by the way, of course, Paul is the author uh, uh, of the book. The first group of people is the people who will make us disappointed. How many of you have been disappointed? Eight of you. The rest don't want to deal with people. Leave me alone! Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, before I really proceed in this, I uh, just want to say that um, a lot of people really, because we are aware that through deep relationship, which the Bible calls koinonia. By the way, koinonia does not refer to a fellowship hall. Someone say, oh, let's meet in the koinonia. Koinonia is not a room. It is not a hall. Koinonia is a word that describes relationship. It is one wherein my life is open to yours and yours to mine. So it is very possible that we go to church but never koinonia. As a matter of fact, many people avoid koinonia. They will come in right after when people are settled so that there will be no more greetings. All the greetings are done. Is everything done? Now I go in. Oh, he's about to say amen. Let's me go out. Avoiding koinonia. Why? For many reasons. Well, he might sell me something. <laughs> Second, well, I really don't like his jokes. They're corny. Or, oh, you know what? Uh, I don't want to deepen my relationship. It will require commitment. He will invite me to his small group and to attend this and attend that. He will ask me to donate something for a certain project. Let me get out of here. But, since we're talking about relationship, let me repeat it. It is impossible to be in ministry because ministry is? And people is? So, though it could be hurtful, though it could be challenging, the Bible says, do not neglect fellowshipping. And as we fellowship, we will be hurt by a first group of people, and they are the people that we need to deal with because... Uh, even though they disappoint us. Disappointment is such a uh, difficult um, situation because you are relying on that person, you are hoping and banking that that person will help you, will encourage you, and halfway down the line, he leaves you. And that is exactly what happened to Paul with at least two persons. The first one is Demas. Demas. And in verse 9, on verse 10, uh, Paul actually, oh, verse 20, first of, uh, uh, what do you call this? Let me see, where did, where did we get this? Verse 20, in the book of Acts, chapter 15. This is a description of who Demas is, at least back then. Before Demas has become a disappointing person, this is who Demas was. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greeting. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, and then? Demas. And look, and who are they? They are my fellow worker. At one point, Demas was an encourager. Demas was a sidekick. He was somebody who would work along with Paul. He was the one who would uh, help Maybe Paul, you know, prepare uh, the things to be done uh, as he goes out in, in different places. He would accompany him to his missionary journeys. As a matter of fact, Demas was with Paul in his first missionary journey. He was with Paul all the way. But for somewhere down the line, Demas had fallen. In another verse, in, uh, sorry, that was Philemon. Okay, the Phil Philemon earlier. This one in Colossians, Paul again says here, Our dear friends Luke, the doctor, and Demas sends greeting. In Colossae, 
Colossae, Demas was still, uh, you know, somebody along with Paul. He was still working well with Paul. But as we see here in the book of 2 Timothy, Demas has switched sides. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Now, it's hard to sometimes comprehend and understand people whom you have been working with for a very long time. They have the same goals, the same vision. You have eaten the same lumpia and the same pancit. And you have gone to the ups and downs of ministry. And then one day, adios, amigo. You know, I, I think when Paul was writing this, it, it was, he was still having a, uh, uh, you know, sorrowful uh, you know, regret of having Demas, a fellow worker of the Lord, leave him in ministry. But I think the truth is this. You love the Lord. The person next to you loves the Lord. There will be many instances where you'll be working together. But perhaps, just perhaps, one day you'll be left behind. And you say, this is, this, is where, this is where my limits are. No more crossing the border. Up to here, it's all yours. That's very disappointing. That's very discouraging. And I think if we are to do ministry, and ministry is? People. And people is? Yes. Expect disappointments. Expect disappointments. Such as them. Even the people you work with today. People in your small groups who is with you. Let's start a new group. Yeah! After three months, go for it. You can do it. <laughs> Disappointing. Another person, at least in these first few verses, is Mark. The author of the Gospel of Mark. Mark really wasn't a, you know, uh, a on-fire person to begin with. He was like a okay, and then went on fire, and then disappeared, and then went back. So it's a very similar story with Demas. And as we look in uh, Acts 15, for example, here it says, Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, uh, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach and the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Let, Barnabas, let's go back. Let's revisit all those churches that we have went through. We went to. And 37, Barnabas wanted to take John, who is also called Mark. So John or Mark, same person. John also called Mark with them. 38. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him. Why? Because he has deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So for some reason, Mark said, okay, Barnabas Paul, I'll go with you. Let's go preach. Let's go plant churches. But when they reached Pamphylia, Pampilia, wherever that is, he said, you know what? I think I'll stay here. This is a nice, good place. You, you guys go ahead. I'll stay here. He deserted them. That's why, you know, this mark right there had deserted them. So, but we see later on that mark is on fire, but at this point in Acts 15, he's a discouragement. He's a discouragement. So, I think... As we go through ministry, as we go through church, whether it be in this local church or any church that you go to, we must fellowship. It is a command to fellowship. It is not a suggestion to fellowship. But as we do, just be aware that there will be times that these people that we call brothers and sisters can be very disappointing. Very disappointing. So what, what did Paul say? What, what's some remedy? What can we do? Since we will be experiencing it, there's no excuse to this. If you have been a Christian long enough, you'll find that somebody's going to step on your foot. Uh, I was again with uh, Cesar, uh, Frank, and uh, Vanessa, and since they've been here roughly about two months, and we are on uh, Kingdom of God Chronicles uh, Part 2, which talks about the church. And so I've been asking them, well, so far, you know, two, two and a half months, how has it been so far? How do you find the church? I said, oh, it's very warm. 
the first time I came there, at least Vanessa said, the first time I came there, uh, people just greeted me. And then the second week we went there, people called my name. Isn't that great? Yeah, by the way, calling names uh, is very helpful. It makes people come back. And then I said, uh, uh, what, 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 and then she said a lot other things about good things about this particular church. And I said, well, what about things uh, to improve? She said, uh, nothing so far. <laughs> I said, you're right, nothing so far. Because a day will come, a day will come that us, you commit yourself, as you relate yourself to people, as you give of your time, of your effort, of your money, the very people whom your ministry will disappoint you. Now, that should not be a reason for us to back out and say, you know what? It's a disappointing situation. Let me just cut off all relationships. Because we cannot grow our relationship with God without building relationship with people. Because people is and ministry is so what did Paul say? What can we do? Well, he suggests two things. First, release. What is that word release? When you find yourself partnering with a brother or a sister who will just bring you more headaches than good in what you are supposed to accomplish, there are times when you just say bye-bye. You see, uh, sometimes our problem is we're having difficulty in saying bye-bye. We all just try to tag them along and it's been dragging us. And what the result would be, we are never, never able to move forward. Because we cannot look at the future. We always just think about the past. Look what Paul did in Acts 15. Let's go back to the verse we said earlier. We read earlier. Uh, well, Barnabas said, Paul, let, let's, bring, uh, let's bring Mark. And by the way, if you're not aware of this, Mark is the cousin of Barnabas. So there, there's some relationship there, okay? You know, oh, let's bring my cousin. Okay, let's bring my cousin. But Paul said, no way, Jose. No <laughs> way. I, I have an experience once. No more. That is it. Verse 38. But Paul did not think it is. You see, there are times we just have to use our head. As Christians, oftentimes, we are taught and instructed just to use our hearts. Oh, but what about him? Oh, no one will take care of him. You know, sometimes it's for the best of the person to leave him alone. Again, not at all times, at certain times. At least for this occasion. You see, uh, Mark was an ordinary church member. He was supposed to be a leader. He's one of the you know, church planters who went along with Paul and Barnabas. But halfway, he said, adios. So, release. It's sometimes wise to let go of people. How does it apply to us? Well, sometimes you will have so-called assistant in your small group, uh, a leader in the church. You don't hold them forever if they're not functioning the way they should. Remember 1 Timothy? First Timothy is a letter because there were lots of uh, leader problems in the church. And for some reason, Timothy is having a hard time to take off the leaders who were not supposed to be there. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, it's healthy just to let them go. Say, let them go. Let them go. Do it with, with your hand. Let them go. Uh, that, uh, we were watching yesterday, Movita, and uh, the, the ladies here that, that uh, during the uh, what's that, Father's Day, nobody but you. Yeah. Let, let go. Let go. <laughs> let go. Another thing, and this is true, we will face people within the church who are disappointing. One is to let them go. Okay? Let them go. It's okay. But at the same time, be ready to hold them back. You don't cut off relationships forever. You see, even the most disappointing, the most disappointing brother or sister in the family and the kingdom of God, whether you like it or not, 
you're going to spend eternity with that person. True or true? true. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Okay? <laughs> the most disappointing, the most irritating person you can think of. You cannot escape from meeting with that person again. You will meet with him, whether it be in this life or the one to come, eternity. You cannot say, I'll just avoid. You cannot. You will have to deal with it. But, as I mentioned here, at the right time. And the right time is not a specific number of days or a number of months. It requires a specific situation. Let's take a look in verse 11 of our text in 2 Timothy chapter 4. After saying 9 to 10, you know, so-and-so is out there, Demas is out there, uh, etc. is out there. Then verse 11, only Luke is with me. And then he says to Timothy, Timothy, on your way here, get Mark and bring him with you. Why? The, the why is the very important. You don't just bring him because Mark has been, you know, I, I left Mark uh, for what, six months now. It's time to bring him in. It's not a time period. He says why he wants him back. Because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Some people, some in the church will say, how come I'm not in ministry? I've been here for six years. It has nothing to do with time. The question is, are you helpful in ministry? Am I helpful in ministry? If not, even though you're six years or 60 years, it doesn't matter. We just have to let you go. Release. Say with me, release. There you go. And there's a time to call in. There's a time to call in. So, I think all these names that Paul have mentioned, there's just a lot of them, but uh, we'll try to go through each and every single one of them. But the first group of people that we will be working with are people who are on fire for God. They are our sidekicks. Just understand that there might there might be a time when they will disappoint us greatly. Now, going to the other side of the coin, it is possible that the one who is a disappointment is you and I. It's not always the other person who will be a disappointment to you. It could be you and me to be a disappointment to another. But the real question for us today, before we go to point two, which one are you? Are you helpful in ministry? Or a person who's just, you know what? Just better release you. Or you are one who would Paul say, call him because he is helpful. Is it a serious question? Many people today is just a Sunday Christian. And what does Sunday Christian mean? Well, Sunday Christian. Actually, Sunday Christian is not even specific. It could be our Christian. Because it's just a Christian within the time period of church service. And that's it. And during the service, half of it is sleeping. <laughs> so it's minute Christians. I'm sorry? So these are you know, disappointing people. Demas, Mark. Demas, we didn't read anywhere else that Demas have returned back. So I don't know. Maybe after the book of Revelation, maybe Demas came back and, and was useful in ministry. We don't know. But at least we know Mark. Mark was let go of Paul, but when he was, you know, he came back to his senses, then Paul said, bring him back. Bring him back. He's useful to ministry. But if not, like Demas, let him be. Let him be. Second group of people, of whom you and I will be encountering and be prepared uh, is that to deal with people who oppose us. Oppose, opposition, contra, opposition. You see, it's one, it's one thing to have a person beside you and leave you. Okay? I don't know which one is better. A helpful person who stops helping you okay, and leaves you, or a person who stays with you and is a problem to you. Which one do you want? Huh? One who is helpful but now no longer of you, so you let him go, or somebody whom you want to let go, but he will stick with you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think I'd rather have the first one. I think I'd rather have a you know unuseful person at least in the ministry and let go than to have a person who will stick with you and yet it's just causing you problem. That's worse. That's worse. But this is sad to say that there are people like that. There are people like that. They, they won't let you go. They won't let you have peace. It's their joy to take away your joy. It's their ministry. <laughs> Verse 9. Uh, do your best. Okay, let me skip that one. But let me just talk about this person, Alexander. Alexander. Alex. Uh oh. Alexander is a person, according to these verses, has been causing trouble and trouble and trouble and trouble. Now, who is this Alexander? You see, sometimes when we think about opposition, we think about, you know, the Muslims, the Islam, they are opposed to Christianity. Oh, they are making it difficult. Or you say, well, it's the government. They are anti-Christian. They are opposing us. You know what's a greater you know, problem than those kinds of people that will oppose you? People who are your brothers and sisters in the Lord. They are with you in church. They are with you in your Bible study. They are with you in their worship. And then, for some reason, they just love, 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 to oppose everything you do. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, we have the first glimpse of who Alexander is. Remember in chapter in 1 Timothy, the problem church that Paul was writing Timothy and say, you know, these are the problem in the people in the church, you know, uh, take them out, etc. Look with me who Alexander is in 1 Timothy. Among them, he was speaking about people who have fallen away and have done their own thing. Among them are Hymenaeus and uh-huh, here we go. And what did Paul do to Alexander? Whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. So for some reason, uh, in 1 Timothy, maybe you know, Timothy was having difficulty in kicking out this Alexander from the leadership in the church. But Paul, one way or another, had to say, Alexander, it's time to let you to let you go. Alexander did not live quietly. He said, I will not live without a, a fight. Who are you, Paul? You're not even here. So these are kind of people who, will re who rejected the authority of Paul as an apostle. They rejected Paul's teaching because Paul did not require the non-Jew to be circumcised. And so these are, you know, uh, uh, hardcore Jewish converts and you say, you know what? Yes, you are a Christian, but you need to follow every single law. Amen. And that's why they're having conflict with Paul. Because Paul says, you know what? We are saved by grace. You don't have to follow all these laws. You don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to, uh, you know, not work on Sabbath. You, you can, you're free. But they, you know, disagreed. So Alexander won't live quietly. He opposed Paul to the bone. As a matter of fact, he has been mentioned in many parts of scriptures, in Galatians, in 2 Corinthians, in Philippians, and then, of course, in Timothy. So for some reason, Alexander won't leave Paul alone. Wherever Paul went, he would stick like a glue, but not to help, to oppose. Yeah, there are people like that in the church. I, I, I just don't, I, I cannot understand their thinking. They will not agree with how the church is run. They will move out, but they won't stop criticizing. Huh. Why don't you just start a church? Why do you want to you know, disrupt everything that is being done? Why? There are people like that. There are many people like that. So Alexander is really a, 
uh, you know, a pain that you could not... Uh, hey, have you had this experience when you, you know it's itchy? And then you, you try to scratch, but you know it's not there? It's just itchy, but you don't know where to scratch it. <laughs> huh? These are, these are the Alexanders. They are in church. They are what, what you will call faithful. They're faithful. Why are they faithful? Well, they're always there. They're always there opposing. <laughs> Alexander. And of course, the whole Roman Empire. The whole old Roman Empire was opposed to Paul. As a matter of fact, at this time when he was writing his letter, well, his life is just, you know, by the weeks, maybe a month or so. There are the people who will be opposing. Whether it be within the church, outside of church. And the question is, how do we deal with those people? How do we deal with people whom, you know, supposedly a brother or a sister or somebody out there who's just opposing you? It could be a family member. It could be somebody you love. It could be your spouse, even. He just won't leave you alone. He, he sees changes in your life, but he won't, he won't leave you alone. What do we do with them? Well, I think Paul gives here some suggestions. And really, it's a very simple suggestion from, this, from the text right here. First, well, first two. <laughs> first is surrender. To whom? To that person? To the Lord. Verse 14, part B. The Lord will repay him. Talking about Alexander. In Tagalog, Diyos na ang bahala. Just leave it to the Lord. You know why? This kind of people, Alexander, the more you entertain them, the more they oppose you. As a matter of fact, they want you to challenge them. They will try to do things so that you will bite in into their discussion. And guess what? If you try to buy in to that kind of thing, what happens? Doesn't help. It will just create bigger problems. And it will only bring the, the bad out of you. So Paul said, you know what? I just let this guy go. I just give it to the Lord. Not I, it's the Lord. The Lord knows. He's not blind about this thing. And secondly, in 16 part B, may it not be held against them. In other words, forgive. Jesus is a great example, our master and savior, that when... The people he loved opposed him, the Jews, the world ridiculed him. He said, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And guess what? Many of these brothers, Alexanders, oftentimes they don't know what they're doing. Because you know what? In their mind, they're thinking they're doing a good thing. That's true. I've seen people in the church who will oppose the church, oppose individuals, oppose leaders, but in their mind, they're saying, but this is right. So how can you fight a person who thinks that what he's doing is right? How can you fight that? Yeah. Just forgive the person. Lord, forgive him, for he doesn't know what he's doing. But don't say it to his face. Otherwise, it will just create a bigger problem. But I think that's what Paul is trying to say. Lord... The Lord will repay, and Lord, it's in your hand, may it not be held against them. I'll just let it go. I will not permit another, what do you call it, a pressure, another, what's that word? Huh? Stress added to already stressful life. How many of you here are stressed? In just a regular routine. Now, do you want another stress? Anyone? Huh? Anyone? You don't want any more stress? Huh? There are many free stresses. <laughs> so don't bother. Don't bother. Paul says, you know what? Yeah. He wants to tag along where I go. Hallelujah. Let him come along. Where I go, I go to Philippi. He comes. Whew. Okay. And besides, you know, it, it keeps Paul to, his, to the edge. Maybe it makes Paul, you know, watch the words that comes out of his lips. 
Now he's careful. He's no longer just carefree because there's a critic around. Because whatever I preach, whatever I say, he's going to say something about it. So I better be very, very careful. I need to be very, very precise with what I say. So sometimes bad people are good people, right? If they are used wisely. So use your bad people wisely, amen? <laughs> now this is the good part. But it's sad to say that we have to deal with this. As part of ministry, it is but natural to sometimes depart or separate with people we love. You know, there are people that we want to get rid of. You know, I, I wish, I pray, Lord, please take this person away from me. But for some reason, he's always there. And yet there are some people whom you hope to be, you know, with them forever. And yet circumstances, situations, split us apart. And these are the people uh, that we'll be dealing with, people uh, that uh, you and I will be separated from. 19, he says his last words to kind of just add on, okay, there's more space in my paper. Let me just, you know, write this down. These are the great people that I really want to be with. They are not problem people. They are not people with me helping right now. But I love these guys. I remember them. Who are they? With Priscilla and Aquila in the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth and I left Pophemus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get there before winter. Eubulus greets you and so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord uh, be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. Well, who are they? First, Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila, they are on top of the list of Paul. How I wish Priscilla and Aquila was with me. I, he met him in Philippi. And wow, maybe Paul was recalling, whoo! When I was in Philippi, and I was ministering in Philippi, man, ministry was hmm, sweet. How I wish they are with me. I is missing Priscilla and Aquila. And then uh, uh, Onesiphorus. Uh, this guy is just so attached to Paul that it says in 1 Timothy, only Onesiphorus visited Timothy in Rome. He didn't know where Paul was. He went through all Rome to look where Timothy was. I mean, that's how close Onesiphorus, he's an encourager. And, and here Paul was saying, oh man, everybody left me. I have a person who's opposing me. How I wish Priscilla and Aquila was with me. How I wish Onesiphorus was with me to lift my spirits up. Don't you like these kinds of people? I mean, they're great people. But sometimes, even though they're wonderful and you want to be with them, situations fall that we have to separate with them. And then he mentions Erastus, and then he mentions Tophimus, and then he mentions Eubulus, Pudens, Linus, Claudia. I mean, these are people Paul said, oh, whew, it will be a perfect church if only I have these people. How many of you would like to have a perfect church? One wants to have a perfect church. But, okay. How many, I know it's not a reality, no? It's not, but how many of you wish to have a perfect church? You know, when, when you come and then everybody's just greeting you. Oh, hello, sister. Oh, you're so beautiful today. Hey, bangu, bangu. You smell so good. Oh, did you lose weight? Wow. Uh, well, what's your color of your makeup? Oh, what did you get? I mean, it's just wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, you won't find such a church. And people say, Amen. This doesn't happen. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you run away? And by the way, that's uh, what many Christians do. They come to a church, settle in, and then, you know what? I don't have the same kind of people I used to have. Let me go to another church. Then when they go there, oh, I have so and so, but I miss you know, the joker in my church. So let me go there. And then you go to another church, you find a joker, but no one brings food. Ah, let me go out there. <laughs> Paul sometimes, you know, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with you know, wishful thinking, how I wish. We will come to that point. When we get to heaven, all of those things will be what we think it would be. But meanwhile, 
I remember a TV show, Batman and Robin. Meanwhile, so how do we deal with it when we have to separate? And we do have to. Uh, just this month, uh, I know many of the small groups have separated, and one of the things is, oh, we're going to separate. <laughs> no. Everything is so nice. Now that you know my stories, I know yours. We're going to separate. You mean I have to restart again? You know what? That's the best thing, uh, by the way, uh, on uh, separation, because your jokes will work again. <laughs> okay? I, I, like for me, I only have a set of jokes. If, you know, maybe, maybe give me a few more years, I'll be, run, I'll be running out of jokes. So maybe I need another church. <laughs> then I can reuse my jokes. Uh, myself and Steve, sometimes we're just you know, discussing because I upload my, uh, my sermons every week. And sometimes I no, this time because my, my, my sermons are all uploaded, now my, my jokes and my stories are all recorded. I can no longer reuse them. <laughs> but if it's live, no problem. After three weeks, I'll tell you the same joke, you'll laugh again. So how do we deal with them? Continue fellowshipping. When you separate with your, you know, former people that you want to be with, don't think that they're the only good people around. There are plenty. How many people have I mentioned so far? Those people that Paul mentioned. How I wish to be with Onesiphorus, uh, Priscilla, Aquila, and... All, all, all those people, there's about 10 of them. And how many so, so far bad people were mentioned here? Um, what about one or two, right? So if you look at that ratio, including Luke and every other person that is mentioned there, you have about 10% probability. For every one bad apple, you have nine good apples. So yes, you might find you know, bad apples around here. But take heart. <laughs> there are many good apples, but if you... Say, you say to yourself, you know what? I, I've experienced a bad apple. No, no more, no more, no more, no more. No more fellowship, no nothing. I'll just attend church and then after that, boom, I'm out of here. Anyway, I'll grow with the Lord. I'll read my Bible. It doesn't happen that way. I say, fellowship, there are more good guys than bad. There are more you know, people who are maturing the Lord than those who, who choose to get stuck up. Those people whom we have, Release. Okay? And to some, to give up to Satan. Right? Like what Paul said. So, continue fellowshipping. Create new friends. Expand your network. Don't just say, okay, you know, this is me. And that is. That's why, you know, we always say, you have to stick in a single particular local church. You cannot come here and the next day, we say, well, but they're all the same. Yes, they're all the same. But the thing is, you cannot build relationship if you keep on jumping. As a matter of fact, it is good that people typically sit on the same chair, right? That's, uh, hey, John, you have changed your seats. Do you sit there? You sit over there, right? Oh, you've been there, okay. <laughs> but, but you see, uh, uh, after what, get to know the people around you. You know why? That's a good thing. It's also called accountability. You look around you and say, oh, something is missing here. What is that? Something big and something... Short. <laughs> you, you get to know people around you. But more than just getting to know who they are, you need to koinonia. Fellowship. This is not, you know, right, right now we're not having fellowship. Right now. As I speak right now, we're not having fellowship. This is just a single-sided conversation. Fellowship is intimacy. So, Continue, better. Continue building. Don't worry. Yes, you'll encounter bad apples. That's okay. But you'll find many good ones as well. Okay? Uh, also understand, none of them are perfect. Even if you find a good one, none of them are perfect. Something is missing somewhere. Then maybe you can fill that gap. And second, pray. Pray for good apples. Pray for people around you who will be, uh, you know, uh, Onesiphorus, who will be uh, you know, uh, Priscilla and Aquilas around you. 
There is nothing greater and better than be in ministry and be with people who are with you. It is very lonely. And by the way, I know many pastors who got very, very lonely. Even in a large congregation because he's all alone. So there's nothing greater and better than to have somebody along with you walk in the path that God has told you. Nothing greater than that. So I think, you know, as Paul wraps up all these uh, names in 2 Timothy, he really is kind of telling Timothy, Timothy, you know, as I end my life here in Rome, I, I just recall all these people that I wish I was with, and this, all these people who have done the work with me, uh, and do the work for me. I'm here in prison, but they're out there in Galatia, in Philippi. You are in Ephesus. You are extensions of my hands and ministry. Yes, I do have an Alexander uh, who runs away, but, you know, uh, I'll just leave him to the Lord. I praise for Mark who left me, but now look, he's useful. Why don't you bring him back along with you? So in the same manner, brothers and sisters, we, we are in a journey. Last Sunday, we, we have learned that all of us have expiration date, right? But none of us know when that expiration date is. So meanwhile, while our shelf life is still good, the question is, who are you surrounding yourself with? You'll deal with disappointing people. Just let them go. And then when the right time comes, pull them back. You'll uh, find people who are opposing to you. There's nothing much you can do. The more you try to oppose them, you, the, the more you entertain them, the more they just, you know, they get challenged and rise up to oppose you even more. So just surrender them to the Lord and forgive them. And last, build your relationship. Expand your network. Your official network. Let's all rise up. And let's pray. And say, Lord, give me a team. Give me Onesiphorus. Give me... Uh, uh, Priscilla's and Aquila's uh, who will who will you know run along with me let's pray Father I thank you for this morning I thank you Lord for the time of just reminding us that ministry involves people and people is ministry Sometimes we, 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 we think that it's separate, that we think ministry is a thing, uh, something that we do. Lord, help us to be people of relationship. There are people perhaps here, Lord, who have been hurt in the past, who are afraid to build new relationships. They have the fear of being hurt once again. If you are that person, why don't you just talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender to the, I surrender to you. I don't want to carry this burden anymore. It's all yours, Lord. It's all yours. And on your part, brother or sister, the Bible says forgive. Forgive. It might take some time for trust to be built up, but forgive is just a decision. Nothing you can do right now. Father, I also thank you for all the ministry partners you have given me in this particular local church. For our worship team, for our elders, our deacons, and the many different ministries that made this church function because they're along with me in doing your work. I ask that you continue to bless each one. I even remember, Lord, that the ministry partners I have back in the Philippines. Henry, Andy, Danny. It was fun. Ministry was fun. It was exciting. Lord, may each and every single person in this room have, this, have a similar experience. That ministry is not a drag. It's not something that's a burden. It's really joy. It's really fun. It just so happened, Lord, that perhaps some have not come to a point where they have found their, their partners in ministry. All they have seen so far are people who oppose them. People who are disappointing. Supposedly a brother and a sister, and yet have many times just 
pull them down. So Lord, I ask for a positive experience for those who have not had that experience yet. People of the Lord, you have to desire it. You have to say, yes, Lord, that's my prayer. I want an Onesiphorus. I want a Priscilla and Achilles. On the other side of the coin, you might be the person who keeps on disappointing another. You are not a team player. You're always on the sideline. You're always letting other people do it. You go, I'll say. Understand this. It would have been a lot easier for that brother or sister if you participated. Peace, joy, and fun will come. But not right now. There's work to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word this morning. In your name we pray. Amen.